Hello everyone, I'm teacher Xia Zhou. The product brought to you is the Dofbot AI Vision Robotic Arm. Dofbot AI Vision Robotic Arm is mainly controlled by Jetson Nano. Open Source CV is an image processing library. Use the mainstream Jupyter Lab as a development tool, a six degree of freedom visual robotic arm, with Python 3 as the main programming language. The camera is designed on the body of the robotic arm, and the three-dimensional visual recognition of hand-eye integration makes the robotic arm more flexible and three-dimensional. It can not only realize color recognition, color tracking and capture, human body feature recognition interaction, but also carry out garbage classification model training and sorting. And through the RIS robot operation control system, the six degree of freedom multi-machine control is simplified, making it easier for everyone to learn, use and control. Here is its overall packaging. Now let's open it up and see what's inside. The first layer is a Jetson Nano main control board and a power supply. Then there's an instruction manual with full color pages. There are some parts lists and usage methods in this manual, which are very detailed. This motherboard is optional, and the package with the motherboard will give you an SD card with the factory image burned. There is also a gamepad here, which can be used to control the robotic arm. Next is the second layer. The second layer here is the overall body of our robotic arm because the overall precision of this robotic arm is very complicated. Therefore, our products are shipped after being assembled. You only need to assemble the expansion board and the main board to the body and insert the SD card to use it. Of course, there are some accessories in the third floor. If you are interested in this detailed configuration, you can check the details on the official website. Now we go back to this machine. We can see that the body is made of anodized aluminum alloy, which can improve the surface hardness and wear resistance of the aluminum alloy. The body is equipped with a total of six serial bus servos. Through this cascading method, the wiring is simpler. And we can also read the angle of the steering gear feedback so that a 3D simulation modeling can be carried out to control the movement of the mechanical arm more intelligently. The motherboard on the robotic arm is Jasnano, which is here. Jasnano has powerful computing power and image processing capabilities, and can run multiple neural networks in parallel, object detection and segmentation, and speech processing applications. It can provide 0.47 trillion calculations per second and supports a series of popular AI frameworks and algorithms. This is an expansion board, which is the place on the second floor. I can show you an expansion board. The extended version looks like this. Here is its wiring situation. You can see that the wiring is very simple. The steering gear is directly connected to the steering gear interface in this row, and it is an anti-reverse connection interface, so don't worry about plugging it wrong. Here is an OLED interface. Then there are three buttons next to it. The functions of these three buttons, after the first one is pressed, the servo can be centered. Then the second button, after pressing the servo loses torque. After pressing K2, we can move the servo by hand. Then the third button is the reset button. After pressing it, the coprocessor on the expansion board can be reset. Here is the interface of a PS2 handle. In addition, the expansion board also designed multiple interfaces. It is compatible with a variety of master controls, such as Arduino, 51, Microbit, 32, Raspberry Pi, but only one master control can be installed at a time, like the one we installed here is the Jetson Nano Master Control. 
In the software platform, we installed iOS in the Ubuntu system. iOS is the robot operating system, the abbreviation of robot operating system. This is a highly flexible software architecture suitable for writing robot software programs. We can use iOS to find the positive and negative solutions of the movement of the robotic arm, perform Move It 3D simulation modeling, and combine 3D simulation to control the robotic arm. In addition to PC three-dimensional control of the robotic arm, we can also use mobile phones and USB handles to control it. Now let's experience app control. Here I have already powered on, and then I will open the app. This app can be downloaded from our official website. For Apple mobile phones, you can download it directly from the App Store. Click to enter the first step is to prompt to install the map. Because its suction cup must be absorbed on the smooth ground, so I also prepared a smooth wooden board like this. Then remove the two suction cups in the first row. After installing, screw the two suction cups in. After screwing in, press the six suction cups separately to make its chassis more firm, so as to prevent it from shaking when turning. After pressing it, we click the next step according to this prompt. There are two connection methods here. Choose the wireless connection method. Here is a reminder that the first step is to press and hold the K1 button for 3 seconds. After it beeps, it means that he has completed this and entered the network distribution mode. Then click next, where a Wi-Fi password needs to be filled in. This password is the Wi-Fi password that our mobile phone is currently connected to. After connecting, click on the distribution network. If your current mobile phone is not connected to Wi-Fi, you need to click to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Here it is required to put the QR code on the camera, which is the front. Three beeps of Diddy means that it has been recognized, and you can click OK. After confirming, you can see an IP address displayed on the OLED, which is the IP address after the Wi-Fi network that it scanned just now. Now that it is connected, the first step is to calibrate the steering gear. First click on the center. Then click to start the calibration. At this time, you can start to adjust the angle of the servo. We need to adjust the servo to be straight, in a straight state in the middle. Here, we will fine tune it. After adjusting it, press its claws again. Otherwise, it may not be able to clamp tightly when performing some game recognition later. After adjusting, click OK to calibrate. Wait until it is all green and click Next. Now it's time to do a color calibration. When calibrating here, this black square needs to be in the middle of its screen and then a small green square will appear. If some other rectangular squares appear, or this square is in another position, it means that the steering gear has not been calibrated well, you need to return to the previous interface, and then carry out color recognition after the steering gear is calibrated. Here, according to the prompt on it, first put a red. Now click on calibrate after showing OK, and then follow its prompt to turn green for the second time. Then the third put blue. The last one is yellow. After finishing, you can click finish. In this way, we will return to a main control interface, and the first one is the remote control interface. What about this interface, we can control the six servos separately. There are labels here. First of all, the first servo is the bottom servo. You can drag the joystick. Let it make a rotation. If you think the joystick has a relatively large range, you can press this left and right, so that the angle of its movement is relatively small. Just select which servo you want to control. 
Then the second is the action group, where you can choose 8 action groups to view. Just select the action group and click to run. In addition to this fixed action group, we can also customize the action group through here. Now let's take a look at the actual demonstration effect of the action group. Next is gesture recognition. In gesture recognition, there are two ways, one is gesture recognition action, and the other is gesture recognition stacking. After we select the game mode, click this switch again to enter this game mode. Now let's take a look at the actual demonstration effect. Then the third one is color interaction. There are also three ways to play here. One is to catch and let go, one is to grab the color and the other is to lead the snake out. Everyone must click this switch to enter this game after the game is selected. Now let's take a look at the demo effect. Then there is a tracking game. In the tracking, you can track the color, you can also track the face, and you can also pick up the color and track the color. We must click this switch after selecting this game, and then we will start to enter this game. Now let's take a look at the demo effect. The latter two are garbage sorting methods. These two methods need to use the map on the back. Now we will return the map for it. Then go to garbage sorting. Here it is necessary to put the side with the trash icon on it, and then the side with the words must face the camera. That is, it can't be placed indiscriminately, and the side with the words must face down, so that it can perform accurate recognition. When recognizing, it is also necessary to turn on the play switch. Now let's take a look at the actual effect. and then a developer play. The developer's gameplay here is to identify the color. Here, the side of the color should face here. Then, when identifying you need to adjust the map to this screen. You can use the buttons up, down, left, and right to make a fine tuning. Then there are some colors here, which may not be recognized or recognized accurately, so we need to carry out a professional color calibration, when conducting this experiment. There are two color calibrations here, one is entry level calibration, and the other is professional calibration. Professional calibration is to put four color blocks into this screen, and then click next. Then through this screen, we can see here that red, 
green, blue, and yellow are all recognized correctly, only red is not recognized, then we can select red. Then adjust the red color, which is the range of the specific adjustment value. You can refer to our tutorial. Each color has an approximate range. Adjust it according to the tutorial. A slight adjustment can get twice the result with half the effort. Then after the color is completely adjusted, then perform a game of this developer, the effect is the best. Then there may be some problems in use, let me tell you here. The first one is that the clamping is not accurate. If the clamping is not accurate, you can directly calibrate the steering gear in the settings of the robotic arm. When calibrating, pinch the mechanical clip like this, and then confirm it, and then it can be clamped firmly. The second is that the position of the clip is biased. At this time, two places should be paid attention to. The first is whether the centering calibration of the steering gear has been done well, that is, twisted to the middle. The second is the suction cup. Each suction cup must be pressed to keep the whole robot arm in a relatively stable state, so that it can correctly grasp and identify objects. The third is that after I have calibrated the color at this place, it will not be accurate for color recognition at this position. This is because the value of the color block is different at different angles. If it is to be identified at this position, it is best to perform a professional color calibration at this angle.